We're talking to Mr. Gary Kroll today, who's the Managing Director of Sequoia Financial Group. If you don't know Sequoia, the market uh, cap is around $80 million, ASX code SEQ. The company is an integrated financial services business, providing products and services to self-directed retail clients, wholesale clients, and third-party professional services firms. Gary, welcome back. Obviously, uh, Sequoia is the owner of Financial News Network and uh, Share Cafe, of course. So for transparency, I thought I'd get that out of the way. How are you going today? Yeah, no, good, thank you. Thanks for having us on, Tim, and uh, pleased to have a chat about our results today. Um, Gary, Sequoia announced their 2022 financial year results today. What what were some of the highlights? You know, thanks. I think the main highlight in particular is, is revenue growth in our professional services business. Um, revenue growth across the board by 26%. But probably the most important and, and, and really the major highlight for me is, is what is most important to me, and that is cash generation. The, the business was able to increase its cash generation to $14.7 million before tax or around 11 cents per share. So, that, you know, what, what we believe in and we're quite conservative in that nature is that businesses should be valued on their ability to generate cash pay tax and then pay dividends. And, and that's where our focus was on. And, and I think that was the real highlight. And, and you've, you spoke about that revenue increasing by 26% to 147 million, but net profit only rose 3%. Can you, can you explain that kind of disparity, I suppose? Really, what, what we're doing at Sequoia is we're investing for the long term. So we, 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 we don't um, play games with our accounts. Um, there's, a, there's no abnormals. There's no um, cost of acquisitions. There's no discussion on, on the write downs of the investment portfolio and so on. Um, and and I, th I think that talks to it. And we're investing for the future. You know, for, for example, in the last 12 months, we've, we've invested um, significant um, money on employees. We've added 19 new employees. So we're investing for the future growth that we do expect. Um, and we talk about that in our presentation um, where we expect to get to $300 million of revenue at a 10% margin. By 2026. So we're paying it forward. Um, but the most important focus that we would like shareholders to consider is, is the cash generation, because that's that's what's real. Um, and that's what we are doing. We're generating 11 cents per share in cash and, and EBITDA and, and net profit after tax. You know, we want to pay as less ta tax as we possibly can and generate cash and, and use that cash to fund acquisitions. And, and that that's the focus. And, and where's that cash number at the moment? So we currently have $14.9 million of cash in the bank that is ours, and we generated $14.7 million cash from operations before tax in the last 12 months. Um, that, that was up 36%. So the businesses themselves are operating extremely well in generating cash. Um, our EBITDA was less, so we're actually generating more cash than our EBITDA, which is quite unusual. Um, this year's number was one19 um, and our EBITDA was particularly in, impacted in that regards by we, we wrote down the value of some of our unlisted investments. We didn't get, um, uh, we didn't account for um, a number of things in respect to, you know, COVID payments we received in previous years and all those sorts of things. But ca cash is king for me and revenue growth is king. So they're, they're the two things that we're looking to focus on. And, and of course, financial advice is a, is a large part of, uh, Sequoia with, with Interprac, and I think there's 400 advisors within the business, but it's also a, a, a business with fairly low margin. Where, where will Sequoia grow margins in the future? Yeah, the professional services business, the direct business, which, you know, Financial News Network, Share Cafe, and the Informed Investor form part of, are at much higher margins. So we're, we're predicting 25 to 30% margins um, from our professional services business and our direct business over the next few years. Direct business is obviously very small at the moment at $2.6 million of revenue, but we expect that to move towards $15 million over the next four years. The professional services revenue, if you look at the results, um, grew more than 50% and it's um, a 25% margin business. The financial planning and the clearing businesses are very, very cost competitive and we've invested heavily for the future. So our margins this financial year on, in respect to EBITDA, whilst they might look disappointing, they're, they're an investment in the future. Um, that, those margins are currently 8%. They're growing. We're winning market share. 
Um, you know, financial planners in the last 12 months reduced from something like 25,000 advisors to 17,000. Um, so, you know, you're really kicking into a, a strong headwind there. Um, however, our revenue grew by 30% in that area. So, so we're winning. Um, we, we're disappointed that um, our share price is where it is because we believe we can help consolidate the industry, but we're not prepared to do it um, using currency that we think is undervalued. Um, and we will commence our share buyback um, when we can. So in three days' time, we'll, we'll, we'll reinstate the share buyback. We stopped our share buyback on the 30th of June because the advice that we got was that we're in a lockout period um, and we're doing everything we can by using our cash generation to, um, to go out and, and use it to improve our capital management strategy. And, and Gary, you mentioned acquisitions. You've made some acquisitions um, over the last 12 months. Where do acquisitions fit into the strategy moving forward? Yeah, sure. So the direct division, we made an acquisition, as you know, in May. Um, so none of, none of the financials um, benefits of those acquisitions with informed investor yield report, um, share cafe and the like um, have, have really had any impact in respect to the revenue numbers, but the expense of those acquisitions that has come through. Um, we will continue to look at areas where we can increase um, acquisitions in that area, but probably the main business unit that we will be looking for acquisitions is in professional services at this stage. The margins are, are 25 to 30%. It's software as a service type business. Um, we grew revenue very strongly last year. Um, and we, we now have all the um, infrastructure. We've invested heavily in staff and we will look to make acquisitions in self-managed super fund administration, more document providers, more general insurance broking providers, um, whereas in the licensee services business, we're, we're likely to only um, look at smaller acquisitions where we can use cash to do those. And, and Gary, can you give an update on, on the dividend that was announced and what's the dividend policy moving forward? Um, one of one of the, the the challenges with you know what we consider to be an undervalued share price is um, not being able to use that as currency. So our, our only real currency is cash. Um, so we'll be using the cash to um, to do buybacks, but we'll also be using the cash to slowly increase our dividends. So this this financial year we've paid one. 0.4 cents, which is a 40% increase on last year's dividend, but it's only on a 33% payout ratio. Over the next four years, we're looking to increase the payout ratio towards 70% as the business matures. And that, and that maturity that I'm talking about in that sense is a 30 million um, cash flow um, business. And then we can sort of pay out 20 odd million, um, you know, obviously less tax, um, 15 odd, 15 to 20 odd million in dividends at that point. But, you know, we're, we're far from maturity. We're still growing and, and we're looking to, to conserve cash and use it for acquisitions. Gary, always good to talk to you. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Tim. And it's a pleasure being on the network. So thank you very much.